right, so here we are at DevOps Dispatch live at KubeCon North America, Chicago 2023. I fit that all in there. My name is Laura Santa Maria, and I am a lead developer advocate at Dell, and I have a very special guest with me. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Benazir Khan. I'm a community program manager at Microsoft. And yeah. thank you so much, Laura, for having Woo! me today. Yeah. I'm, I'm blocking the yeah. camera view. We're I'm so very excited. excited to have you. Yes. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. We survived a, yes. uh, a busy weekend before KubeCon because we were at Cloud Native Rejects. This mm -hmm. is the conference that you organize. Yes. Uh, you want to talk to, well, like, what is Cloud Native Rejects for people who don't know? Right. So Cloud Native Rejects was uh, developed. It was this idea that Chris Cole, um, mm -hmm. who is um, a former CEO at Kinfolk, um, came up with this idea of like, you know, let's have uh, a conference, which is right before KubeCon. Yeah. And we host talks with and organize a platform where people who have their talks rejected from KubeCon actually get a chance to present. And right. it also came with the idea that, of course, yes, your talk may be rejected from KubeCon, but uh, there's still quality talks. They're yeah, still good. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, let's have that platform where folks can come in. And of course, it kind of branched into uh, something more in terms of like a fun community conference and, you know, fun vibe and right. know, just everyone having this warm ambience and atmosphere to come and mingle in. Um, Lexi drove it for a few years, of course. Um, Andy has been around for it as well. And um, yes, I'm slowly begin to, beginning to take on the mantle. And dun, dun, um, dun, dun, dun. yes, uh, it's been quite exciting. And of course, I, you know, I have them to thank for all their guidance and all of the support that they've shown over time. And it's um, something that, you know, also is, is kind of something that I'm learning to yeah. do over time. It, I'm relatively new to the space. I know I've been around for two years or so, but about two years, I think I would say. But um, this constant learning for me too. Yeah. 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 It's really fun, isn't it? Yes. It's like organizing an event. I mean, it's also exhausting. Oh, yes. I mean, how, how long did you sleep on Monday? Let's be honest. <laughs> how long did you sleep after after Hardly. Rejects? Hardly. Hardly. Honestly, yes. Um, I have to say, I, I think once I wrapped up, I guess it's also the adrenaline and also yes. flying from Berlin to here and kind of working with that, um, powering through it over the weekend and, you know, not really having much time to think about how exhausted I am, but also feeling it. And, yeah, yeah. Um, wanting to give in finally when everything was all wrapped up, but also finally not able to give in because <laughs> now I've kind of, you know, gotten into this mode where I'm like, oh, I can work through this. And right. I already started thinking about Rejects Paris, which mm -hmm. is also something that I'm driving, which is on March 17th and 18th next year, right before you're oh, gone again. Yes. Um, and of course, as I mean, I mean we've discussed this yes. Uh, yes, exhaustively we during uh, Reject Chicago. And thank you for all of your help volunteering Woo! there. It was fun. Um, we've discussed this exhaustively and like, you know, the, basically the runway from now to Rejects Paris isn't that much. No, so, it's not. <laughs> there's a lot to put together in what I would deem is roughly two and a half months because I'm also thinking of December and January really as one month with all of the holidays coming in yes. and um, all of that. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see how far we get. And um, like with any Rejects, we'll of course get everything done and everything ready for the community. And Yes, it's, it's like magic. Yeah. You just kind yeah. of get it moving and then poof, it works. And you yeah. get to it and then you get through it and then you go, how did I do that? Yeah, really? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I have so much respect for people who do this and, and run meetups and do so many other things for the community and come up with all kinds of cool new initiatives like you hosting yeah. this podcast, for instance, and, yeah. you know, all of this. I mean... It's, I think at some point you're probably on autopilot. Yes, <laughs> just a little bit. I have a feeling, but I haven't ever really fleshed this idea out. But now that we're talking about it, I feel like, hmm, let me articulate this idea and see what Laura thinks. All right, well, let's hear it. Let's hear it. <laughs> I think, I, th I personally think that at some point you really know from the get-go. You know, you've assessed the scope, you know what you mm -hmm. need, you know what you need to do, and you know how many things need to be uh, prepared and you have a plan that's quite clear and then you have a plan a b c d yes you because do. you're like plan a is going to fail i need a plan b plan b could go you know sideways let's have a plan c and a plan d and stuff like that so i think it's this constant mode in which you're thinking about the community you're thinking about the talks you're thinking about the scheduling you're thinking about 
you know, the theme of different talks and kind of having an equitable distribution in terms of both, uh, you know, the, the levels at which the technical expertise of the speakers were coming in, but also uh, giving them this platform and ensuring that, you know, everyone gets an equitable distribution, at least in terms of speaking, uh, a speaking opportunity, but also a chance to actually talk about their product, but not as a as a pitch of any kind. And, right, right. Um, you have all of these things that you're thinking of, which is high level stuff. It's the big picture stuff. And yes. It comes down to also, oh, but um, I need to make sure that this is done perfectly with the right kind of theming and the graphics and what kind of theming I want to go for and all of that. Because let's face it, we're all also visual. So graphics play an important role. And then you're thinking about, yes, but there's also where it's actually happening because it's yes. all in person. And then you're you're thinking about having the perfect venue, but not just for the talks, but also for its after effects. Like, yes. what do people do after it mm -hmm. or like in the interim? And you're thinking of the per perfect space for everyone to come together, have a cup of coffee, discuss some of these ideas because... I've heard this time and time again, and it's something that I, it really fills my heart with so much warmth that people actually find rejects to be the spot, that one place where, you know, surprisingly get to have a lot more productive conversations, but you, yes. you've come in to attend some talks and support friends and peers and colleagues, and then you're like, ah, okay, but I don't know this, you know, th I, I don't know he's arriving or I don't know she's going to be here. And, yes. You know, and then they get, get talking and yeah, that's, I, that for me is really like good um, kind of that mm -hmm. pleasant surprise kind of factor, which is um, something we want to also keep going. And, you know, we, we want to make sure that it's also something that people keep coming back for. Right. And just having that means there should be enough of a comfortable space for all of that to happen, like a physical space. Yes. And um, yes, so of course there's like, you know, the more seamless, I've, I've told this to you, I think, but I, I genuinely believe that the more seamless a lot of these things that you wouldn't otherwise think about seem, the more effort has gone yes. um, behind the scenes for it and to make sure that, you know, it's all set and ready for everyone to just come and enjoy. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'll be honest with you as somebody who's been doing a lot of events and things like that. It's you get to a point where you can't be a perfectionist. You have to let it go. But you're also kind of on autopilot because you've done it so many times and the graphics just kind of fall together, sort of, yeah. maybe, possibly <laughs> if you're lucky. Yeah. Things just kind of fall together over time and you're just like, I know it's going to happen. Yeah. I know we're going to have something. Yes. It's just a question of what will that thing eventually yeah. look like. Yeah. But yes, that is the yeah. wonderful thing about community yeah. events in general is that yeah. the smaller atmosphere, yeah. the better conversations yeah. that you get. Yeah. And I mean... I said this about rejects before I showed up for rejects this year was it's a chance to connect with everybody before the big conference oh. so that you can just breathe for yeah. a minute. I mean, well, maybe if you're not helping run it, <laughs> but it's more of like a, you yeah. kind of get to breathe. Yeah, if you're I was doing just going that. to ask you, Laura, did you get to breathe? Really? Uh, <laughs> you were one way to me. Organizer. You and Rom, yeah. <laughs> you know, do you mean as an organizer in general or are you talking about voluntary for rejects? Actually, yeah. As you can imagine, there's so much that we're depending on the community for. It really is. I mean, it shows at rejects too. Like we expect like, you know, to run all, all of this and, you know, to do a pristine job of it all. But in the right. end, there's so much help from the community that yes. helps it all come together. You know, like, of course, I, you know, I could be brainstorming and, you know, troubleshooting and all of that. But you still need so many folks from within the community who knows who know this this space really well, who know right. the speakers, you know, who kind of know the schedule. They know where things are going and how the flow of the show is and how the flow of the program is and they just kind of, you know, like you get it, yes. like you, you, you would get that. Yes, of course. I mean, these these folks are arriving and they could be coming in from everywhere, you know, and they're flying in sometimes. Of course, they're flying in for KubeCon, but they've kind of made that effort yes. to fly in and be there for rejects. So, of course, we appreciate that. And of course, like to kind of have that uh, flow smoothly, you need you need volunteers like yourself, like yeah. Ram, like so many others who come and help out with rejects. And um, 
you're there and you're able to guide them. Like, yes, yeah. you don't have to, you know, you have an hour. It's okay. Go get a coffee, sit down and work on your slides. And yes. it's okay. Maybe you're giving a lightning talk. Maybe you're giving a 30 minute session. Um, it's okay. You can figure it out. You probably don't need 45 slides. <laughs> it's yeah, all just right. Just a note. <laughs> just a note. Yeah. You could probably, it's rejects, you know, it's the one conference where you don't have to think of your 30 minute session as, oh my God, I need to know top down what order exactly how it's going to be it's not that formal and that's a good thing um you could play around a little bit with the format you could probably go like you know actually i would probably like to do lesser slides mm -hmm. if i have the opportunity i'm also exhausted but i also know what i'm going to talk about and maybe i'll then open it up to a discussion if i have some time and yeah. you know try and see what the audience is feeling and you know get some feedback therein and of course, once your timer is done and all of that, you then have the opportunity to kind of breeze through it and go like, hey, you know, we're going to carry on this conversation right outside and let's do that. And, right, right. And and people get that opportunity to actually meet the right audience. That too happens at Rejects, yes. you know, so it kind of organically comes together that way. But of course, there is a concerted effort in terms of strategy to yes. have, you know, talks placed in a certain way and in a certain order, a certain time of a day. And, you know, of course, there's also, there's availability of speakers, etc. Mm -hmm. that uh, comes into play as well. But yes, the, like I said, I'll, I'll circle back to the point of, if it's that seamless, it means <laughs> there's yes. a lot of attention to detail in the background. And yes, I, I, I also uh, was talking to Bart about this at some point, who was also at Rejects and chatting with some folks. And um, I think the thing that I've learned over time, over, a few, over, over the last few Rejects, and um, is the fact that you learn to step back and also understand where you're obsessing over certain details and yes. where you need to pay attention to the big picture. Yes. And the fact that it's still running and it's running well. Yes, there could be hiccups here and there, but it's mostly running well. And yes. the community is happy. The people are happy. Um, they see value in everything else. Mm -hmm. and yes, I can see that. Yes, that other thing could have gone so much better. I did a dry run and all of this and, you know, like, oh, it, you know, this shouldn't have happened, for instance, or something right. like that. Like, oh, what about this hiccup? Like, you know, like something like a glitch with the graphics or something. And you're like, I, I think about that sometimes because I can, I, can see, I can see that and I'm like, I can see the recordings and I see the mistakes and all of that. But um, it's a good reminder to step yeah. back and remind yourself that, hey, but yeah. The main thing is most of it ran really well and a lot of it gained value out of it. People tuning in were able to tune in because yeah. there was a live stream set up, for instance, and they are going to have those recordings. It's not going to be in the perfect order, likely, but, um, you know, there could be some hiccups here and there, but they're still going to benefit from the fact that, yeah, OK, I was thinking about this topic I was thinking of. Um, you know, uh, security. I was thinking about some of this information and I see some of these slides and I see some of this, um, you know, topic being covered from like these different perspectives and I can follow mm -hmm. up with this speaker or that speaker and, you know, probably proceed towards a potential collaboration, see how that goes and all of that. So that really is the big picture stuff. And, yes. you know, when that happens, like, and it almost always happens. There's always an organic way that people find that helpful and useful. And I've seen so many people come up to me and I, even today, like at KubeCon, even earlier and stuff like that, they come up to you and they tell you, oh, that's, you know, that, that was, was useful. The value. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I, I probably wouldn't get to do that at KubeCon, but I got to do that at Rejects. And yes. Because they weren't expecting it. And, you know, we're right. also like, yes. That's the best part. Of course, come have fun and everything. Attend a talk or two and you never know. You might find your next potential collaboration right exactly your next potential project to work you know on something that you've been very passionate about that, right and right. you probably didn't really know where to begin and stuff like that but rejects is also where i mean i i also tell myself when i have that chance to you know spend more than a few minutes at a talk i also tell myself that oh this is a great opportunity for me to try and sit down and enjoy the vibe of this yeah. conference you yeah. know, and, and try and learn from this talk because some of those talks are also because there are different levels of technical expertise you also kind of go like oh i i want to learn about vasm for instance right. um where do i begin and you will find some some of that at rejects you know where you go like yeah you don't have to be at you know at a certain level 
yeah to kind of go and attend that particular talk or some of those talks and that's why like there's something for everyone like there are people yes. who are far far too advanced in some of these technologies and of course they're users and everything and they know where they're arriving and yeah. you know and they they know what they're talking about they know what they're looking for good but yes. i've also heard a lot of people actually say that oh you know i actually got to learn about that thing and i guess i wouldn't ask anyone at kubecon because it, the idea is that you need to be at a certain level of technical expertise or right. you need to know a certain something something about that topic before you go into um something as big as kubecon something as formal as kubecon right. thing um so yeah yeah it's a great conference for that and yeah. it definitely is that scenario where people never actually know just all that work that goes on behind the scenes cuz i've yeah. i've worked with brand new organizers who are kind of like oh it just kind of happens, right? Yeah. Well, no, no, it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> Bef before you try to do a conference, let me tell you, there's a lot more work going on. Um, but yeah, it, and then the, I don't know. I've always found that community events, smaller events, I guess I should say more, even more so than yeah. community events, but just smaller events, a couple hundred people. Yeah. People make connections. Yeah. And that's really the value of it. And I know a lot of people kind of wonder, well, why, why would I pay X amount of dollars. Maybe it's like a hundred dollars for a ticket there. When I, you know, business wise, maybe I should send all my people to these big yeah. conferences where I meet lots of people. Well, not really. Cause they're not going to go up and just talk to people. Yeah. Not most, let's be honest. Most of us don't really feel comfortable just walking up to a random group of people <laughs> and going, hi, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm going True. to join you. Where is it at rejects, you know, yeah. like, Oh, we all just watched that talk together. We all just got a chance to explore that idea together or right. in, in, at least in my case, maybe, maybe it's just me. I know a lot of people there. So it's my chance to introduce, Oh, Hey, I'm going to introduce you to people. I think you two should meet. Yeah. Oh, you're interested in learning about WASM. Yeah. Let me introduce you to this person when I get a chance to yeah. see them at KubeCon or if they're here at rejects right. or something like that. So yeah. Overall, I think it's good. I think Rejects yeah. is a wonderful thing. Thank now, you. We yeah. are getting close to time. Yes. So I want to give you a chance. You can plug anything you want. What's going on in your world? Yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> well, I've already started planning for Rejects Paris, like I mentioned earlier. It's in, yeah. it's on March 17, 18, right before KubeCon again. Oh, boy. Um. So, yes, sponsorships on my mind. And I was talking to some folks earlier today as well. And the idea is that... To also, I mean, the idea with sponsorship for rejects is also to give people and, you know, like a mm -hmm. stake at the conference and to actually help us shape this as the collaborative conference it is. Yes. You know, it's not mm -hmm. a pure Microsoft or Azure thing. Of course, uh, we are part of, uh, the, you know, Azure and all of that. But the idea is, and if you've seen our, our sponsors list and everything, it's always been a bunch of different folks, a bunch yeah. of different companies and all of that. And it's kind of always had that vibe and we've maintained that. And yes. we want to continue that and because it just it just makes us very proud that we're able to bring so many folks together and, um, you know, and have all of them kind of have a stake at the conference and, you know, also kind of attend, enjoy, participate in every which way. So right. if everyone's, if there's anyone interested, yes, please um, write to me. Um, or sponsorship at rejects.io, absolutely. Would love to chat about how you can get involved. Um, the other thing that, you know, the, the interesting thing that I was also thinking about, which I think came up a few times, was also, um, I think we discussed this briefly during rejects. We might time, have. Um, is how rejects is actually complementary to KubeCon, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yes, there are a lot of, I mean, yes, we're talking about, you know, the intimacy, the warmth, and, mm -hmm. you know, the usual... Uh, positives in terms of advantages that come up uh, for rejects. But what's also cool is um, building those connections, finding, you know, expanding your network at rejects, but also carrying that over to KubeCon. Right. Because now you have, you now you identify these, these folks, you know, that you'd probably meet at KubeCon and it kind of helps you sharpen the agenda for your KubeCon, KubeCon mm -hmm. even better, like come in with more clarity, like, oh, I... I know these folks. I yes. met them at Rejects. Yes. And, um, here's here's how I'd like to take that connection forward, or you know, just just chat up at KubeCon in a more focused manner because KubeCon is also that kind of. It gives you that platform. It's that much bigger, so you can take advantage of it, and it, it has its own it has its own big big positives. Of yeah. course, I I see that absolutely. Um, you need something more structured. You need you need more visibility like right. this and stuff like that. So right. When people actually 
attend rejects and find these connections and then they're able to carry it forward to KubeCon and it fleshes out hopefully into something way more productive into the future. Yes. That's just that's just brilliant and it just makes it just makes me so happy and you know yes. it's heartwarming when uh, folks come up to you and tell you that hey that was really cool because I yes. could I could really flesh that out. I could flesh out ideas that I was thinking about at rejects, talk to some folks who may be able to help and then carry that on onward and forward into yeah. KubeCon and yeah, and onward from there. So yeah, yeah, yeah and that's just really amazing. Randomly, as we're noticing, wander yeah. in and knock <laughs> right. into people at the booth and oh, go like, yeah. oh, hey, I met you at rejects. So yeah, I so you said sponsorship.rejects.io. Yes. Now that's sponsorship at rejects.io. Yes. At rejects.io. Yeah. Uh, so sponsorships at sponsorship at <laughs> rejects.io. And that's yes. with a K, not with a C. Yes. For people who need to know that. <laughs> Thank I, you, I, Laura. I should clarify you know that rejects one. way too well now. <laughs> I do. I do. I know how this works. So yes, right. you're looking for cloud native rejects yes. with a K. Yes. Uh, if you're Googling it, you'll be able to find everything there. Yeah. So we'll see you in March. That should be yes. lots of fun. Oh, lovely. Yes. Woohoo. Uh, yeah. Um, and that's in Paris. Yeah, I can't not wait. in Chicago. <laughs> just so that you know. Uh, yes. This has been DevOps Dispatch Live Yay. here at KubeCon North America, Chicago, 2023. I got again yeah. all of that in. My name is Laura. I'm Benazir. And now we're gonna say bye. 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 <laughs>